Today's video is going to be all about Launchpad, our slicing software. What is Launchpad? It's a cloud-based slicing software developed by our team here at Inksmith. It runs exclusively in a browser, which means nothing needs to be downloaded onto the computer and will work on any device with a browser that's connected to the internet. As included with all the Inksmith printers, that's the Inksmith Maker Forge, the Cubicon Single Plus, and Style Plus, as well as legacy printers like the Inksmith Orbit, Cubicon Style, and Style Neo. What is slicing? Slicing is when you take your 3D object and run it through a slicer to cut up the model into layers that tells the 3D printer what to print. When do I need to use it? Anytime you want to print a file, be that a model you made on Tinkercad or an object you found on a 3D printing website like Thingiverse or Printables. What happens next? Once you slice the model, it will export a G-code file. G-code is the language that 3D printers understand. Using X, Y, and Z coordinates, as well as extrusion rates, movement speeds, and more, the G-code file tells the printer how to move in order to print your model layer by layer. So first, we gotta get your file. From Tinkercad, it's pretty simple. Once you've finished up your model and ready to print, go to the top right and click Export. Then you'll have the option of .obj or .stl. For most cases, we'll stick with .stl. It should save to your downloads or wherever you save your file. And then getting your file from a 3D printing website like Thingiverse, your first thought might be to click download all files, but that can often be a big zip folder that contains images and other files that you don't actually need. So it's good practice just to scroll down to Thing Files just below the preview images and then click on the file you want to save and download it. Second is getting to Launchpad. To get to Launchpad, it's as simple as opening a browser and going to launchpad3d.ca. It's as simple as that. I'd recommend favoriting this page and saving it to your bookmarks so you can come back to it later easier. Next I'm going to run through a quick basics of Launchpad and then dive into each section specifically. If you're looking for specifics, check the chapters of the video or the description for timestamps. Up in the top left is the device button. This is where you set your printer that you're using so that all the correct settings get loaded. Top right is import and language buttons. The language button allows you to change the language of the interface to better suit your needs. The import button is where you upload the .obj or .stl files you just downloaded. Middle left has your model settings, middle right has your 3D printing settings, and the middle of the screen is where your printing surface is and the model. After you've sliced, you'll have the option to preview how the model was divided for the printer. At the bottom, you'll now see kind of like a scroll bar, and the ends can be dragged along the bar to see what the different stages of the print will look like. This is very helpful for checking for issues. So the next step in your 3D printing process with Launchpad is selecting your 3D printer. In the top left, you'll see a button that says Device. And on your first time opening the web page, it'll probably say Cubicon.SinglePlus. If you're printing on a Single Plus machine, then you don't actually have to worry about changing anything. But if you're printing on any of the other machines that we offer, click on Device and a menu will pop up with options you can choose from. If you forget the name of your printer, there's a picture that pops up on the right as you hover over the options. Selecting a different printer will adjust the workspace available to you. Once you've selected your printer, click anywhere outside the menu or the X in the top right to close it. So the basic controls. Left clicking and dragging around the space rotates your view around the center of the screen. Right clicking and dragging pans the view across the object. Scrolling or pinching and pulling on a trackpad will zoom in the view. Clicking on the object will turn it from yellow to green, indicating that you've selected it and can drag it around with your cursor or adjust it with the left side menu. At the top of the left side menu, there are the view options. Clicking home returns the view to its default position. This is always helpful if you've moved around the workspace a whole bunch and need to like recenter yourself. The rest of the options will move to a flat perspective of the listed side. We'll skip over the slice and export buttons for now, but for the most part, when 3D printing and modeling, we work in X, Y, and Z planes. X and Y are labeled just below the measurements that are in millimeters, and Z is your vertical height. Next option is Rotate. Clicking this button will open up a submenu with X, Y, and Z options. Select your model and then either click the arrows to incrementally adjust the rotation or type in a number of degrees. Sometimes when importing a model it doesn't sit the right direction so you can either manually adjust the angle or select the Lay Flat button. Then you can select a side you would like to lay flat against the build plate and it will snap into place. It's best practice to print with the largest surface area on the bed to assure a good print adhesion to the bed, but be mindful of overhangs that could mess up the print. I'll talk more about overhangs in the support section. Next we have the scale button. 
Clicking this button will open up a submenu with axis, size, and scale options. By default, all three axes will be selected for uniform scaling, making everything bigger or smaller. If you want to just adjust one or two axes, it would distort your model. To scale the model, select it so it goes green and adjust the dimensions to your desired size in millimeters or by a factor of its original size using scale. This means that if you typed 0.5 in scale, the model will shrink to half the original size. Typing in 4 would grow the model to 4 times its original size. Next we've got the delete button. Clicking this button with the model selected will delete it from the workspace. You will have to re-import the model if you want it back. You can also hit the delete key on your keyboard. On the right side, we have printer settings. If you're new to 3D printing, it's best practice to start from these preset options until you get a good handle on settings you want to dial in. The three options are fine, balanced, and fast. Fine, which prints slower but has a higher quality final product and usually has less layer lines visible. This is always good for models. Balanced, which is a faster print than fine, but has some layer lines visible. Fast is the fastest preset option for printing. Layer lines are usually pretty visible, and it's good for prototyping. To keep it simple, the beginner things you'll want to know about adjusting the more advanced settings are the base, infill, and supports. For basic base knowledge, there's a skirt, which is a couple lines of filament that print away from the model, and this is good if you switch colors often and want to make sure your print doesn't start with any leftovers from the last color. Brim, like the brim of a hat, this connects to your model, increasing the plate to model surface area. Use this if you're finding small parts aren't really staying stuck to the build plate, and it does often require some finishing steps of removing this excess plastic once you're done. Raft prints a couple layers of filament below your print so that there's an even greater chance that the print stays stuck during the process. Be cautious of using rafts as they are generally thrown out afterwards and waste a lot of material. And then there's no base. Often prints don't need a base at all. For basic infill knowledge, Infill is what can save you a lot of time during a print. It's the filament that gets printed inside the model. This is only here really for structural support if needed. Here you can select different shapes for the infill. Some work better than others in specific cases, and that's something you'll have to test. Fill fraction is the next thing to adjust. The parameter goes from 0 to 1, 0 being no infill, and 1 being 100% infill. We almost never want to print with 100% infill as that can take days to print even small objects and waste a lot of plastic. A good practice is if something is for display, you'll want the least amount of infill as possible. 0.05 to 0.1, which is about 5 to 10%. And structural prints can often be sufficient with 0.3 to 0.4 or 30 to 40%. For basic supports knowledge, Lastly, we have supports. It's best practice to print without supports where possible as these just get removed and thrown away and can often leave unfinished edges or blemishes on the print. These imperfections can be removed, but only if straight off the printer isn't the last step for your model. Sometimes it's the only way to get a print to not fail, but if the option is there, it's best to optimize without supports. Try to design projects without overhangs. Overhangs are parts of a model that don't have anything to attach to directly below. Since 3D printing works on a layer-by-layer, bottom-up system, you can't just start printing in the middle of the air. 3D printers can usually print up to a 45-degree angle, any more than that, and it just can't attach to the last layer. For many models, simply laying the model on a different side can be enough to eliminate the overhangs. Think about the silhouette of your model. From the sides, you don't want to see any gaps touching the build plate. If there's no good way to eliminate overhangs, try dividing the model into pieces that print easier and assemble the model after. As for adding supports, supports can be found automatically by adjusting the max angle and selecting detect. You can also place supports manually by using the plus button. There are plenty of advanced settings to go through and tweak on your prints and machine, but only attempt this if you're willing to put in the time and the effort to make it work. Our suggestion is to leave these settings default until you can set aside some time to tinker and are willing to have some prints fail. Jumping back to the left side, we've got the slice button. Once you've dialed in the settings you want from the right side menu, clicking the slice button will start the process of cutting up your model so the printer can print it properly. Once the slicing is complete, you'll have a preview of what each layer would look like as it's being printed. Then into the slice model, use the scroll bar at the bottom of the screen to have a look through the model and make sure that all the steps connect to the last and no modeling errors occur. 
At the bottom, above the scroll bar, is a legend for shells, which are light blue. These are the walls of the model that usually get printed slower than the internals for a higher level of detail. Solid fill, which is green, is where the printer will lay a solid layer of filament in a back and forth direction. This is usually on the first and last layers of your model. Sparse fill, which is purple, is the infill. Usually this gets printed pretty quickly. And supports are red. These are the supporting structures that we just talked about and are made to easily detach from the print and can help with stability during the printing of overhangs. Lastly, we have the export button. Once you're satisfied with the preview, clicking the export button will re-slice your model and prompt you with a menu. From this menu, you can change the name of the file here. Below that, you can see the file size and the estimate of the time it will take to print your file. Then, if you're printing with a different density of filament, you can adjust that here, but you'll probably want to just leave that. Below that will give you an estimate of how much filament will be used in this print in length and grams. Inksmith sells one kilogram spools of filament, so you can see that small models like this won't use a lot of material. Below that is the section labeled G-Code with a download button. Clicking this button will download the file that you can then drop onto a USB stick or memory card and plug it into the printer and start printing. Depending on the printer, it may download as a .gcode file or a .hvs file. These are practically the same. As long as you selected the correct printer before exporting, you'll be good. I hope you found this helpful. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, let us know in the comments down below. Check out the support page on inksmith.ca, email us at tech at inksmith.ca, or tweet at us at inksmith3d.